of child of God. Welcome to the Daily Smith to Give Swat Devotion of Podcast. My name is Victoria Eog and I am your host for today's podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today and without further delay, let us start with prayer. Father Lord, God Almighty, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness. Thank you for you are the one who saves us, you're the one who delivers us, you're the one who sets us free, you're the one who makes a way for us where there seems to be nowhere. So Lord, we trust in you and we thank you for your word which stirs up our faith as we listen to it and as your Holy Spirit instructs us and teaches us in Jesus Christ's name. The title of this teaching is God will deliver you. God will deliver you. We will read Daniel chapter 3 verse 17 and John chapter 21 from verse 15 up to verse 25. And we are reading from the New King James Version. We start with Daniel chapter 3 verse 17. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O King. John chapter 21 from verse 15 to verse 25. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tell my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, When you were younger, you gathered yourself, and you walked where you wished, but when you were old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will guard you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following. Who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? Follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that the disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A God whom we serve is able. To deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O King. God will deliver you. A few days ago, we talked about the story of Daniel. We talked about yeah, Daniel and the lions. Then we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the king and the fiery furnace. And the main point that we brought out from that is that because we serve Jesus, you're going to be persecuted. At times, people will want you to go with the flow, to do as they want. And when you refuse to do as they want because you choose to serve Jesus, then you're going to have to make a decision. Either you serve Jesus and you are persecuted, or you do not serve Jesus, you deny him, you sin, you do everything else like the world, and they're going to love you and accept you, in quotes. So you have to choose. And... Daniel, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were ready to be persecuted and even killed for the sake of obeying God, though they knew that God would deliver them. So it depends on the way God wants to glorify his name. He may want to glorify his name through the situation turning around and you being set free completely from the person who is persecuting you, or it could be set free a different way, like you could die from the persecution, like Stephen in Acts of the Apostles, so die from the persecution. But it was still a victory. Look at afterwards. Um, among those took part directly or indirectly, with Paul, it would be direct, indirectly in his persecution. Paul was saved later on. Remember that when Stephen was dying, he said, 
he was kind of asking God to forgive them, to not charge the sin against those people. This is still an example of love. And there are so many examples of people in everyday life who, is, who were persecuted. And after they died, because they decided not to deny Christ, the people who were persecuting them, the people who even killed them, gave their lives to Jesus. And were afterwards also persecuted and killed for that sake. Uh, but whatever the case, the point that we want to bring here is that God is going to grant you victory in the temptation, in the trial, in the obstacle, that God is going to leave, deliver you. You don't have to like... It's the, the fact that they were sure that God would deliver them, which made them not give up, you know. They knew that whether God would deliver them like from the situation or whether like God would make the persecutor stop, or whether God will change the heart of the persecutor, or whether they would even die. They knew that in the end, we are the ones who win. We have the victory in Christ Jesus. We are the ones who win. We are the ones who are going to spend eternity with God. And this is the ultimate victory. So even if they destroy my flesh, they can do nothing else to me. You know. So God will see you true. He's a God of deliverance. He's a God of power. He's near you. And you have to believe. It's because you believe that you're going to stand firm. Despite the persecutions. Despite the obstacles. Despite the insults. Despite the criticisms. You're going to stand firm. Because you know that the God that you serve is a good God. And that he's faithful. And that's not going to let you down. So, so don't let anything in you that is not yielded and bent to the plan of the Almighty. Because if you're double-minded, for example, let's say that if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had said, okay, we will practice idolatry and at the same time we'll also save a God. At that time, you're double-minded. You're saving two masters at the same time. I don't, not, do not expect God to set you free at the time or to deliver you. You've decided to deny him, to betray him. Or like others to say, okay... Uh, I'm going to compromise this thing so that I'm going to have a promotion at my job. Whatever the case, God understands, in quotes. No, he does not understand that you choose to sin against him just so that you will fit in, or so that you get a promotion, or so that you get married, or so that you get kids, because the people, even when they can't get kids immediately after they get married, instead of, like, trusting God, you know, and I and we know that it's not easy, so to say, but it's a decision. Instead of trusting God 100%, they decide to, this expression that they usually say, turn on, like, uh, put on one fire for the Lord and one fire for the devil. So they choose, like, they're gonna pray, yeah. But at the same time, they also go to witch doctors, they also practice witchcraft to make sure that they have a child. So in the end, when they have the child, they're like, they are thanking God and they're also thanking the devil because they know that to them, they tried everything so they don't know from where it comes from so in the end it just and when consequences come afterwards they act surprised don't let anything in you that is not yielded to god that's not bent to the plan of god make a decision that i'm standing firm whatever the case i've chosen jesus i'm not denying him i'm not denying him to obtain any form of pleasure from this world because enmity if you want to be an enemy of God, then love the world. Love everything that is in the world. The lust of the flesh and all the rest that goes with it. Then you're going to be an enemy of God. But if you want to be a friend of God, choose to believe his word and to stand on his word and to obey his word. So God's going to deliver you. But you are in the position for the deliverance. And the deliverance may not come the way you think it should come. But in the end, he's still faithful. So we have to be ready to expect the deliverance according to what the word of God says. Not according to what people will tell you, but according to what the word of God says. And it could be that you're going to leave this body, you know, and you're going to go and spend eternity with God at that moment. Or it could be that the people who are persecuting you, they're going to be challenged, they're going to be transformed through the way you speak boldly about Jesus and they're going to turn to life to Christ. It could be one or another, or it could also be there's so many options. But in the end, do not deny Jesus. Trust in him to deliver you. So I will end with this quote by Smith Gospel. God never lets the chastening rod fall upon anything except what is marrying the verse. God never lets the chastening word fall upon anything except what is marrying the verse. So let us pray. Father Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your goodness and for your faithfulness towards ours. Lord, we pray, uh, we confess to you that there have been moments where instead of standing firm and trusting you and obeying you, we chose to sin against you. Father, we pray that you forgive us. 
and that you help us to change in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us today and for listening from start to finish. Thank you for listening from the beginning to the end of this podcast episode. We, you know, we have one new podcast episode every single day by the grace of the Lord. So make sure to subscribe and tune in tomorrow by God's grace to listen to the next podcast episode. If you have prayer requests or questions or anything you need to discuss concerning the Bible or this podcast episode or any other podcast episode or the Smith Figures World Devotional in general or the Bible in general or any sin uh, which you are addicted to for which you need deliverance or healing if you need prayer for sickness and disease if you need healing even in terms of your finances if you need prayer you can always contact me on Instagram Dr. Victoria Eok you can contact me on Instagram with your prayer requests with your questions with your like anything that you need which is concerning the Bible by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit we're gonna start I'm expecting hear from you soon and God bless you bye bye